at my direction, the United States successfully concluded an airstrike in Kabul, Afghanistan, that killed the Emir of Al Qaeda, Iman Al Zawiri. You know, Zawiri was uh, Bin Laden's leader. He was with him all the, the whole time. He was his number two man, his deputy at the time the terrorist attack 9/11. He was deeply involved in the planning of 9/11. One of the most responsible for the attacks that murdered. 2,977 people on American soil. For decades, he was the mastermind behind attacks against Americans, including the bombing of the USS Cole in 2000, which killed 17 American sailors and wounded dozens more. He played a key role, a key role in the bombing of U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania, killing 224 and wounding over 4,500 others. Mm -hmm. He carved a trail of murder and violence against American citizens, American service members, <clears throat> American diplomats, and American interests. And since the United States delivered justice to bin Laden 11 years ago, Zawahiri has been a leader of Al Qaeda, the leader. From hiding, he coordinated Al Qaeda's branches and all around the world, including setting priorities for providing operational guidance that called for and inspired attacks against U.S. targets. He made videos, including the recent weeks, calling for his followers to attack the United States and our allies. Now, justice has been delivered, and this terrorist leader is no more. People around the world no longer need to fear the vicious and determined killer. The United States continues to demonstrate our resolve and our capacity to defend the American people against those who seek to do us harm. You know, we, we, uh, we, we make it clear again tonight that no matter how long it takes, no matter where you hide, if you are a threat to our people, the United States will find you and take you out. After relentlessly seeking Zawahiri for years under Presidents Bush, Obama, and Trump, our intelligence community located Zawahiri earlier this year. He had moved to downtown Kabul to reunite with members of his immediate family. After carefully considering the clear and convincing evidence of his location, I authorized a precision strike that would remove him from the battlefield once and for all. This mission was carefully planned, rigorously minimized the risk of harm to other civilians. And one week ago, after being advised that the conditions were optimal, I gave the final approval to go get him. And the mission was a success. None of his family members were hurt and there were no civilian casualties. I'm sharing this news with the American people now after confirming the mission's total success through the painstaking work of our counterterrorism community and key allies and partners. My administration has kept congressional leaders informed as well. When I ended our military mission in Afghanistan almost a year ago, I made the decision that after 20 years of war, the United States no longer needed thousands of boots on the ground in Afghanistan Mm -hmm. to protect America from terrorists who seek to do us harm. And I made a promise to the American people that we continue to conduct effective counterterrorism operations in Afghanistan and beyond. We've done just that. In February, our forces conducted a daring mission in Syria that eliminated the Emir of ISIS. Last month, we took out another key ISIS leader. Now we have eliminated the Emir of Al-Qaeda. He will never again, never again, allow Afghanistan to become a terrorist safe haven because he is gone and we're going to make sure that nothing else happens. You know, it can't be a launching pad against the United States. We're going to see to it that won't happen. This operation is a clear demonstration that we will, we can, and we'll always make good on the sol solemn pledge. My administration will continue to vigilantly monitor and address threats from Al-Qaeda, no matter where they emanate from. As Commander-in-Chief, it is my solemn responsibility to make America safe in a dangerous world. The United States did not seek this war against terror. It came to us, and we answered with the same principles and resolve that have shaped us for generation upon generation. To protect the innocent, defend liberty, and we keep the light of freedom burning, a beacon for the rest of the entire world.
because this is a great and defining truth about our nation and our people. We do not break. We never give in. We never back down. Last year, on September 11th, I once more paid my respect to Ground Zero in New York City at that quiet field in Shanksville at the Pentagon and at the Pentagon, standing in the memorial at Ground Zero, seeing the names of those who died forever etched in bronze is a powerful reminder of the sacred promise we made as a nation. We will never forget. The memorial also bears the quotation from Virgil. No day shall erase you from the memory of time. No day shall erase you from the memory of time. So we continue to mourn every innocent life that was stolen on 9-11 and honor their memories. To the families who lost fathers and mothers, husbands, wives, sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, friends and co-workers on that searing September day, it is my hope that this decisive action will bring one more measure of closure. No day shall erase them from the memory of time today and every day. I'm so grateful for the superb patriots who serve the United States intelligence community and counterterrorism communities. They never forget. And those dedicated women and men who tirelessly work every single day to keep our country safe, to prevent future tragedies. It is thanks to their extraordinary persistence and skill that this operation was a success. They've made us all safer. And to those around the world who continue to seek to harm the United States, hear me now. We will always remain vigilant, and we will act, and we will always do what is necessary to ensure the safety and security of Americans at home and around the globe. Today, we remember the lost. We commit ourselves to the safety of the living, and we pledge that we shall never waver from defending our nation and its people. Thank you all. And may God protect our troops and all those who serve in harm's way. We will never, we will never give up. Sir, you're clear. Sir, you're clear. There you go. Excellent. There you go. That was it. Uh, I'm curious, I'm, I, you know, if uh, Newsmax ran it. <laughs> I'm guessing no. Yeah. I'm, I know Fox did. They, that's got to be upsetting. We'll have to watch for that one tomorrow. That might be half. Uh, that might have to be one of the videos we actually do tomorrow. Is watching, uh, you know, how Fox reacted right after it happened, and see if they went. We, we go. <laughs> Chip is feeling safer now as we are. Oh yes. Chip, you feel good. You go, okay. Hi, buddy. Yeah. Hi. It's a boy. It's a good guy. Uh, yeah, no self-praise. Just praise the people who found him. Praise the people who carried it out. Um, you know, stuck to the the idea that this is about what happened and no further. And by the way, this this I think also points to you know what I've been saying. And and I and Carlos Alzraki mentioned this the other day as well in his kind of pushback against this. You know, um, you know the the usual suspects of people who kind of shit on the idea of follow through. Um, but what are you looking at, buddy? But he had, um, he mentioned that, you know, if Al Gore was president, if there hadn't been all this Nader bullshit, Al Gore would have won. It, it, the, it was so narrow um, that that made a huge difference. I mean, we're talking about a 500 vote difference. Where are you going, buddy? I got to, I'll let you out. Hold on. He thinks something's going on over here. He thinks it involves food. Where are you going? Okay. Go. Go. Good. Good, buddy. Come on. Come on. You're okay. You're good. Go back to where you were napping. I know I abducted you. It was unfair, but they wanted to see you. Um, <laughs> he was like, "Did someone open a can?" I thought I heard a, something along the lines of like it was a can or was it something. Yeah, yeah. Nader blew it for Gore, and without that, I mean, again, the the question of whether nine eleven would have or could have happened is a reasonable one under. Um, uh, if Gore had been president, simply because he would not have ignored the bin Laden PDB, for one. Um, yes, just a, it is Lent roll. Hi, le hello, ladies. Um, 
that and and that if it had happened, he certainly would not have um, reacted to it the same way that that uh, that Bush did. Period. There's there's no way that a president Al Gore ends up attacking Iraq. Even if we ended up going into Afghanistan, it would have been in a smaller footprint, more specific to the mission at hand. I mean, even John Kerry, when he ran the, you know, in the, in the sec, for the second Bush term, was saying this should, this is a Interpol and and military and intelligence endeavor, not a lifetime war in this, you know, another decade, you know, and he would he would be right. It would be fifteen more years. And again, the Republicans who supposedly love the military mocked him by wearing uh, Purple Heart band aids. With, you know, Bush Jr. avoiding service by being in the Texas National Guard and going AWOL a bunch of times and all that shit. Dan Rather losing his job by bringing it up. Nobody argues that John Kerry didn't show the fuck up. He was, he was wounded in, in a firefight. Like the, just the idea that, like, Kerry being the guy who says no one should be the last man to die for a, a lie. Uh, I'm paraphrasing. Just the quality of that human being compared to who actually ran the fucking place. And everybody's like, I don't know. I don't know. Do I really? 